Welcome to another edition of the Hawk Off the Press podcast. I'm your host, Gazette Hawkeyes reporter, John Seppe. I'm excited to welcome back Brad Heinrich, CEO and founder of the Swarm Collective. Brad, thanks for joining me. Hey, good to be here, John. So as we record this, not long after the news became official that Beth Getz is no longer interim AD, she is now permanent AD. Brad, now with you've had about six months that she's officially been interim AD, and obviously you had been working with her before. How helpful has she been from a working relationship standpoint as you're trying to grow Swarm? Well, Beth has been tremendous. Uh, Beth comes to a lot of our tailgates before before football games, and not only does she show up, she'll 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 talk with with fans and and donors, and and at least half the time she'll grab the microphone and talk about how important Swarm is to the success of 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 Iowa athletics, and and hearing ha- having people who may be generally averse to name image likeness. Hearing from the, well, it was interim athletic director, now permanent athletic director as of like an hour ago, probably, or two hours, um, that 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 this is important. Uh, it, it really helps us. Um, and, uh, you know, she's she's been a, a pleasure to work with. I, I, I don't have a, a bad thing to say about Beth. Um, the search committee actually... Um, they they wanted to talk. They they actually uh, hit me up and and asked my opinions uh, when they were going through uh, the hiring process, and they wanted to hear about my my interactions with Beth. So um, I think it's a well deserved uh, privilege that she's got, and um, you know I'm 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 very happy for. Her. I guess that search yep. committee call probably didn't need to be very long. No, no, it didn't. It didn't. See, I had I didn't have it. it Nothing negative at all to say about Beth. I think uh, she's she's a very present. I think she's got a very level head. Um, and, um, you know, obviously there are certain parts of being an athletic director that, that you know, it remains to be seen, right? So, you know, fundraising and, and hiring coaches. I mean, she's probably going to have to hire our, you know, the next football coach and maybe the next b- men's and women's basketball coach, you know, if she's here long enough. Three pretty um, big I hires that, there. Yeah, those are pretty big hires. Yeah. Um, so, so you, you know, but I at this point, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, we could do way worse than Beth gets, and that's that's probably not saying it the right way. She, I think she's, I, th- I think it'd be hard to do better than her, um, at least from what I can tell. So, in the six months that I've known her. And in case there wasn't enough other interesting things going on in Swarm World, you raise a hundred thousand dollars in one day yeah. alone. Yeah, how about that? If we could just have three hundred and sixty-four more, just like that, <laughs> we will be dominating the NIL landscape. But I think if I did, if we did have that, we may have a bunch of broke Hawkeye fans out there. So, uh, <laughs> um, but no, yeah. Yesterday, you know the, this. Um, you know, in order to in order to fund a roster uh, for football or basketball, um, you know, in, in today's world, it actually takes money, and that sounds crazy. It used to just take a scholarship, um, whether you like it or not. That's not the world we're living in now, and and I decided that uh, that yesterday was a a very opportune time for for me to to issue a call to arms to Iowa fans to say, hey. Um, I need to raise a bunch of money so that I, so that we can have the best roster possible next year. And, um, and, and so, you know, we've been very successful in, in, uh, and I think that, that the fact that a lot of these football players, for example, are coming back next year, not leaving to go to another school, not going to the NFL, um, while it, I think it, it speaks first to the culture that that Kirk Ferentz has created in Iowa football, I think it's it, it it also speaks to the power of the swarm and and the program that we have. And these and these kids want to continue to be involved and and they feel like they've got it pretty good here. So um, thanks to Hawkeye fans for that. So with that hundred thousand for the kind of average listener tuning in, how much of a difference can one hundred thousand dollars make for you? It, well, it, it's it's a stepping stone. I know that sounds like hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, 
Um, but I will also tell you that that the market for some of these uh, um, high caliber elite uh, student athletes is north of that um, in a year. And so, um, you know, this this certainly helps us tremendously. Um, we cannot fund a roster on one hundred thousand dollars alone. <laughs> um, I can tell you that that, you know, for, you know, for for uh, men's basketball and, and football, we're trying to raise a million dollars for men's basketball. Uh, we need to raise probably closer to three million dollars for football. Um, so, you know, to kind of give you that just sort of gives you a flavor of, you know, just looking at those two men's sports, um, you know, kind of what we're up against. So a hundred thousand, it's, it's certainly a, a, a great, a great step, but that doesn't mean we, we, we haven't come close to the finish line yet, John. And then hypothetically speaking, we'll keep this in all hypotheticals based on <laughs> how much resources do you have right now? Do you have the ability to support a, a along with what you already have? And um, do you have the ability to support, say, another high caliber athlete in football? Let's say. Well, I think I think that might have been the the genesis of some people's uh, donations yesterday. Uh, there was some interesting news that hit the wire that I think uh, might have. Um, encouraged a lot of people to, to donate. And, and, um, you know, the, the NIL world and the NCAA says you're not supposed to incent student athletes to come to your school with NIL money. The, 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 the reality is though, is that that student athlete is going to expect to be paid their market value when they get here. Um, and, and so, um, uh, certainly, uh, if, if we were to get another, um, high caliber student athlete out of the out of the transfer portal. Um, you know this 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 hundred thousand will, will will certainly help to 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 support such a such a a um, an elite player. Um, so, and then kind of for me as a numbers guy, kind of big picture, where is Swarm at in terms of membership, in terms of fundraising level, and in terms of where sure. you want that fundraising level to get. Now that I'm yes. not having to have you dance out of interesting hypotheticals. Yeah, good. No, no problem. So yeah, <laughs> facts. This is easier for me. Um, so we have we crossed the three thousand member mark uh, yesterday, and and so we've got about three thousand and thirty five members. Last time I looked um, earlier this morning, and and it's a little more than one point two million, I believe, in annual revenues or donations from those from that group. Um, we also have some some corporate members that that probably get us closer to. I said corporate members, meaning your your your, your casinos and your beer and your vodka and your water and some of these other places that that support us. Um, you know, probably another that's another million million plus box. And then you have private donors, and and so. You know where are we to where we need to be? We're we're not we're not there yet. Uh, we're not even, we're we're really not even close. Um, but it's also January, so um, you, we're in 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 fundraising mode. And um, I, I I want to have five thousand swarm members donating swarm members by the end of twenty twenty four. I don't think that's too much to ask. We're over three thousand now. Um, if we can get there. We, if we can expand and get a couple more corporate members and our private donors continue to step up, I think that we can. I think that we can compete against the 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 elite schools and in, in their NIL programs, and and hopefully that will translate to uh, results on the field and on the basketball court. In terms of where you're at right now, do you have a sense of kind of where Swarm stands compared to maybe the rest of the Big Ten in terms of how competitive you are right now? Yeah, I, I think we're pretty competitive. Um, we're 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 certainly competitive relative to your Minnesotas and Illinois and and you know those types of programs. Um, where you know comparing us to Ohio State, <laughs> you know they've got a pretty big war chest there. Um, Michigan, you you could you could have guessed you know the the, the top couple probably Nebraska is in that same in that same 
um, tier. And I would say that outside of those three, I think we're in the next tier and in probably towards the top of that tier. So um, now I would say Oregon is up in that top tier now. I think USC is in that top tier now and they're new. Um, I'm not sure when they're officially new, but they'll, they're coming. Um, yes. This summer at so, some point it officially yeah, changes it, it, class. Yeah. So, so, you know, the, and, and so your USC's and your, and your Oregon's of the world just, just blitz right past us. Um, and, and there's just, there, they've got some, they've got some advantages there that, that we don't have. Um, but having said that, um, in the new in the new Big Ten or whatever the heck it's going to be called at some point you can't call it ten anymore right um, <laughs> <laughs> you know eighteen when it was, when, yeah yeah when, when it was when it was when it was ten when it went to eleven and when it was eleven like okay ten's close enough to eleven and then it, you know it kept kept going and now we're at what eighteen I don't know we call it the Big Ten anymore but um, in any event whatever whatever the new conference is called um, you know I still think we're going to be in the top half of that. Um, and, and, but there's still going to be, you know, a handful of teams that we just, you know, we, they're, they've just got, they've got their war chest is much bigger. And so, um, that's also why we've got good coaches and they, and they still, they, they recruit great players and we'll be okay. Hard we to have a have, Phil Knight. Have have yeah. 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 We yeah. don't have a Phil Knight. I mean, yeah, that's kind of too bad, but yeah, so be it. Yeah, somebody listening can start their own shoe, massive giant, and then simple enough. But yeah, um, when you're trying to kind of make up for it, you're mentioning the beer, the vodka. It seems like you've been getting really creative with different ways. I see now there's also a swarm travel. There is, yeah, that's a really cool thing, John. And and you know, I don't like gimmicks at all. And and you know, when people start giving me those kinds of things, I kind of I bristle. But this one, um. You know, Hawkeye fans can actually save money. I mean, that's one of the reasons I did it. One of the main reasons I did it was say, if I can save Hawkeye fans money, maybe they'll want to donate some of that savings to the Swarm. But also, when they book through iowaswarm.com and the Swarm Travel, um, we get a commission um, off of that. So, uh, you know, that, that and it also helps that person's their status within Swarm. So they can move up levels and that sort of thing if they just book their travel through through iowaswarm.com and hopefully they'll be saving a lot of money while they're doing it. Um, I've heard from a lot of people and I've done it myself that, that, yeah, yeah, I go out to your Marriott's or Hilton's or whatever and look and see how much a room is. And I say, okay, it's this amount, but then I go to Iowa Swarm and I can get that exact same room for 40, 50 bucks less. Hey, why not? I've saved money and, and, and the swarm benefits as well. So uh, that's what it's really all about. And you can, you can book that through iowaswarm.com and, and, you know, there's no, there's no fee. There's no fee to do it. Um, but it's, it's a little bit like your Travelocity or your Expedia or one of those other engines, same sort of concept, but we've got it set up to where, um, you know, the, the fees are, or the, 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 uh, whatever it costs to, to, to book the airline ticket or the, the hotel, um, it's, it's depressed. So you get deeply discount, deeply discounted. So, um, hopefully Hawkeye fans will take advantage of that. Do you have to be a swarm member to participate in it? You, you have to, you have to give us your information and become a swarm teammate, but that doesn't cost any money. So what the, the cost of it will be is that you'll probably get an email from us, um, every now and again saying, Hey, do you want to upgrade to become a champions member and actually donate to our organization? Um, you might get that, uh, but that would be the extent of it. It's not going to cost you anything. You don't have to be a donating twenty dollar a month or more member in order to use that portal. Any any Hawkeye fan doesn't even have to be a Hawkeye fan, really. Any person can go out and use it and save money. And then, as you're coming up with these different ideas, is it just like something that you're thinking about at night, or is there like a best practices <laughs> between the collectives no. to come up with uh, this? It, or so, well, you, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people that hit you up with ideas um this was one i didn't come up with myself a, a former football player named lefty novotny i think he was a kicker had this company that does this and he approached me and and i was very very skeptical to begin with until i started using it and going well good grief if it actually save these people money then i might as well do it um but you know swarm the beer part well that was completely my idea 
Um, and I, I think we were like one of the first, if not the first one, first collective to do something like that. Now I think every collective partners with some beer <laughs> manufacturer. Um, and, and then, and so, so some of these are my ideas. Some of these aren't, um, Swarm Water is coming out soon. Uh, we partnered with Crystal Clear wa Water Company. I think they're, I don't know if they're out of Des Moines. They're in, they're in Iowa firm and uh, they're going to be making water. So, you know, people can buy water and they don't have to, they don't have to buy, they don't have to be an alcoholic to support us like they, <laughs> they used to be before. Now they can just, you know, hey, drink water or maybe they, they drink the beer and then the water or, you know, whatever. But I was going to um, say, that sounds like a good pairing there. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> okay, you've had too much swarm beer. Now you need to have some swarm some swarm water. water. Right, right, right. There you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We'll have to see if we can have a, a partner, a partnered ad between the two of the the brewery and the and the uh, and the water company. That would be kind of funny. And then, what are kind of the next things that you want to see Swarm accomplish? Kind of looking down the road. I, I would say the biggest one, John, is I, I want to, one of our big goals for 2024 is to get in touch with the season ticket holders more for football and for basketball and convert them to members. Um, the last I looked of our 3,000 or so members, a little over 400 of them are season ticket holders for football. That's it. Think about that. Only 400 or so season ticket holders are SWAR members. Um, we advertise on the scoreboard even. Um, and, and, and so we've got to, you know, I'm going to be working with Beth to come up with the, the best way to, um, to get at the wallets, if you will, of our season ticket holders to help educate them first. And then hopefully they'll be willing to, to help us out because, I, I really fully believe that the the road to championships, football or basketball, is going to go through NIL. Um, if we don't have a strong NIL program, I think championships are are probably a long shot. And and so um, I'm hopeful that we can we can get our season ticket holders to be more supportive as a group than what they've been in the past, um, football or basketball. You mentioned that 400 number. I think that makes your overall membership number even more impressive. What's been kind of the key to tapping into or finding, you know, you've got an, a really large percentage of the people who aren't necessarily the typical key stakeholders to fork up at least 20 bucks a month. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the key has been. And I, I, I think going on podcasts like yours, John, or, or, um, you know, I think I've also got, I've had some good people. Um, Scott Brickman worked with us for, for a good part of a year um, and change. And, and Jane Oswald is a terrific ambassador for us as, as well. Um, you know, I think, I think the coaches um, coming out and supporting us, I think has been helpful. Um, you know, uh, I think it's also been helpful that we only have one collective here as opposed to some schools have three or four. And I think donors are confused. Uh, so, so I think those kinds of things have helped, um, the, the, the rabid fans tend to, um, sign up for some of these internet message boards that are, you know, talking purely about Hawkeye stuff. And, um, I've been a, uh, a long time subscriber and member to some of these message boards. And so I think because I kind of came from that stock, I think a lot of the, the, the message boards members um, have been supportive. And I think I would bet you that of our 3000 members, I would bet you two thirds of them uh, come from, you know, that, that also are, are, are internet message board members just because they're so rabid. They, they pay mm -hmm. to talk to other people about Iowa. Um, can you imagine that? Think yes. about it. You're paying money just to talk to other people about the Hawks. Um, that's what people do. And, and, you know, so it's not too far of a stretch for some of those folks to say, well, if I'm paying this much a month to talk to other people about the Hawks, why wouldn't I pay such and such a month to, to hopefully have a better product on the field? <laughs> um, you know, so, so anyway, um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me. Hey, John, it's great to, great to, great to connect. I think last time I saw you, uh, 
Was that Kinnick walking uh, before? What game was that? I can't remember, but it was. They're kind of a blur at this point. Day. Yes. Yeah, it was a it was a beautiful day. Uh, Unlike I mean, we, what we it had, is right great, now. We had yeah right. We had really great weather for football games this fall. I thought really and relative oh, yeah. to maybe prior years. So, yeah, there were not too many of like the really frigid. Of course, like me being in a press box, like okay, yeah. it doesn't really matter too much for me, but. Like Nebraska on the road was cold, but it was home cold. games weren't too bad this year. And now yeah. Iowans are paying the price in January, but I think that's yeah. a decent trade off to make. I think so. And, and you know, it's interesting. I was just talking to one of my buddies. I feel like it's this week of the year, every single year, where it's brutally cold in Iowa. I feel yes. like it's this week. It's like the week that students come back to school. And this was back when I, in the 90s, when I went to school, when the world was black and white. Um, <laughs> it was it was brutally cold then. I remember going back to school and going, "Oh my gosh, I you know this is absolutely miserable." I, and I lived in the Kansas City area, um, so anyway. Well, thanks to our listeners for tuning into another episode. Until next time, we will talk Hawks later.